Hey, this is Daniel from Around the Board, and today we are unboxing another Marvel game, Fantasy Flight's Marvel Dagger. This is a cooperative game in the same um, rule set as Arkham Horror or Eldritch Horror, so we're trotting across the globe trying to take out nasty, dastardly villains um, using some of the best heroes that have ever been created. So let's bust this game open and let's take a look at what's inside. So let's take this plastic off, unreveal the beautiful box. All right, nice linen finish. I think it's linen. I don't know. I kind of just make this stuff up. So, all right, there we go. There's our box cover. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, -hoo -hoo, side box. Now, we have the same image on both sides. Sometimes I don't like that because then you don't get to choose um, which one gets, gets to appear, but that's okay. All right, well, let's go back to the table and let's take a look. All right. So we have the rule book. Is this one in color? Oh, it is in color again. Look at that. Who would have thought? All right, so we got nice good pictures. Um, how many pages is this rule book? Sometimes that's important. 19 pages. So you know, uh, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a teach. It's gonna be a teach, but that's okay. Hero profile guide, what's this? Oh yeah, a little background about all the characters in there. Now, I do like this because each one of these cards will have two sides. One is like the mighty Thor or Thor. So Jane Foster as Thor or, um, or Thor as Thor. Uh, I guess Odin's son may be the appropriate way to refer to him. But you kind of flip the card. So you can have one version of Spider-Man and then you can flip it over and become Miles Morales. I do wonder, we'll see when we look in here though, if you can play Spider-Man and Miles Morales at the same time. I feel like if you can't, that might be a missed opportunity, but, you know, hey, I didn't design the game, so who am I to say? All right, well, let's take this up, and we don't have acrylic standees, but we do have regular standees, you know, and I'm okay with standees. I don't know if you know that that's my hot take. I'd rather have standees over miniatures any day. Now, I will tell you this, I have enough Marvel United things that I could replace all of these with Marvel United figures. Something to consider, huh? All right, well, we got a bunch of the heroes here. We have Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Black Panther, She-Hulk, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Daredevil. We've got a villain Thanos. we got Spectrum. We have uh, Captain America. We have Yuri as Black, Wit or as, uh, Black Panther, Sorcerer Supreme, Falcon um, as Captain America, Voodoo as Sorcerer Supreme, and Lady Thor war machine and uh electra and red skull so 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 far the slate of characters are who you would expect which is fine um i do like me some x-men so i'm a little disappointed that there are no x-men in here but that's okay that's to be expected i'm looking forward to the x-men expansion now all right so we have more thick tiles these are pretty good tiles they pop right out again that's what is to be expected from fantasy flight so um nothing outstanding there but also um just what you expect so that's good it's good i mean really if you're on par with what you should be that that's all i ask i just don't want you to be worse so we have these graphics here of the henchmen i'm guessing these are like ultron bots maybe all right we have a bunch of different little villains here so yeah we got yellow jacket we have some uh, trolls from the from Asgard or wherever they're from. I guess they're not really from Asgard, but all right. We have some more villains here. We have Vulture and Whiplash, Taskmaster, Enchantress, uh, uh, Tit Titania, and honestly, this one I'm not sure. This one might be Boomerang or maybe it's uh, like Whiplash or something. Not Whiplash. What's his name? Speedster of some sort. I don't know. Some masters of evil garbage that no one really knows so no I, I just kid people know who these people are they're diehard fans i tell you what if these were all x-men villains i'd knock them out of the park i know exactly who is who all right hey look at that fantasy flight and uh they don't have a coffin box or not a coffin box but the uh what do they call it the cavern insert the insert that is nothing more than cardboard so that's good I like that they actually gave a substantial insert. That actually means I might be able to, to use this insert. But 
Let's put this away for a moment and let's take a look at the board. I believe the board is going to be pretty massive. Oh yeah. This is the board of the planet of the world. This board is very reminiscent of Eldritch Horror. It's a globe trotting Cthulhu game and you're stopping portals from opening all around the world. And I believe that this map is going to um, kind of resemble that and, and, and make allusion to that. So there you go. Um, we have that. Now we're going to get to the character cards here. That's right. We have the big standing character cards. All right. Let's take a look at these. We got the villain Thanos here. Yep. There we go. Thanos. We have Ultron. Big texty. Oh, how, how do I do this? Sorry, guys. Big bold text. Let's see here. We got Red Skull. Profane science. I didn't know science could be profane. How about that? And maybe it's science full of the F bomb. <gasps> that would be profane. All right. Loki, son of Odin. Yep. All right. We got some good graphics. Now, here are the, the heroes. This is kind of what I was talking about when one side, like this side, is Elektra, and then this side is daredevil so it's kind of cool apparently as you play and if daredevil is knocked out you can flip the card and you can become Elektra, or vice versa that's okay um i i wonder if you're going to have the option to play as both characters at once because i would love to play me as some steve rogers and sam wilson together that seems like a really cool combo um, but this was kind of an interesting way to kind of fit their diverse characters in there so like they have this one story arc called Generations where they kind of replaced all their heroes with kind of modernized versions of themselves. So like Spectrum was the equivalent of Captain Marvel. So it's kind of weird that you have to pick one or the other and that you can't use the classic with the new. But again, maybe you can, I'm not 100% sure. Here's somebody, I bet you, unless you're a diehard comic book fan, you probably don't know who this is. Sorcerer Supreme, Jericho Drum, which I believe is Voodoo, is his is his uh, his uh, uh, hero name, I guess. Though they try to get away from stuff like that, like there is a character named Wiccan, and they were trying to change it because they felt like it was insensitive. So um, that they could be doing that with Voodoo as well. So maybe he's just called Jericho Drum now. All right, well there you go. Now we have other player boards. Kind of looks like these are aspects like vigilance leadership determination i wonder if you get to be like i'm gonna play as hulk and i'm gonna play him as leadership that would be something very reminiscent of marvel champions if they did that that'd be kind of cool so all right well there you go we have these cards these cards are, are good thicker cardboard uh they're definitely just paper though they're not like sorry they're not cardboard they're uh, card stock essentially, but really high quality card stock. So, so that's okay. All right. Now we got some cards here. So we're going to take a look at some cards. It looks like there are specific to players. So we have the same image on them from what is on their card. And then we have some other card, maybe allies that we can find or upgrades like Heimdall. We have the warriors three, um, Book of the Vijanti, Orb of Agamato. So it looks like we have items that we collect, some allies that we will get throughout the adventure. So there we go. What's next in the docket? Oh, we got bigger cards. You know, Fantasy Flight always has to have these Hobbit cards. That's what I, I heard that from the uh, Dice Tower a long time ago, Sam Healy. He would call them ha Hobbit cards. Hobbit cards, because I think you have to have Hobbit hands to hold them. Um, but they always have to have those. I guess it does save space. But once again, so I'm one thing I'm disappointed about is the variety of art. I mean, I guess I guess the art is the standee. So like this Titania is the same that is on the standee. So I guess I guess that's appropriate. Um, but then you do have cards like this that have like no image on it. It's just all text. So that's not a lot of fun. Oh, we have outer space locations here. Alpha Flight into the multiverse hulk smash all right so there we go so we got some upgrade cards we got some villain cards all right what do we got next here oh looks like more villains 
This is good. I need a variety of villains. Give me more henchmen, I always say. Yeah, there we go. We got we got Hydra. How am I going to hold these? Okay, we got more Hydra. These, okay, I know some of that art, like these Hydra soldiers, that is definitively from Marvel Champions. They definitely reuse the art from the Marvel Champions game on some of these. Yeah, that's one. I literally just played them, the Black Order. Uh, the Black Order Outriders. That was the same image in Marvel Champions. Ah, oh, man, that's always a bummer. I always like unique art. Um, part of comic books is appreciating the art and the interpretation of these characters from different artists. Um, and so when you get recycled stuff or no stuff at all, it is a little disappointing. I'd rather have all original art so I can appreciate the new stuff that you're seeing. So, all right, and then the last, I think it's pretty much the last thing here is these, uh, the plastic pieces. So we have standees that have like rubble bases. That's kind of cool, looks like rubble. We have unique dice. And I also, I didn't bring them over, but I have white dice as well. I actually got it at the game store, uh, Mission Board Games. They gave me the dice for free as I purchased the game. I don't know if that's supposed to happen or if they just thanked me or that's just something that they did. I don't know, but I appreciated the extra dice. And there we go. There's not a lot in that game. Um, honestly, the price point on this was, was pretty high. Um, I would say it was about $90 MSRP. And based on what's in here, this does not look like an $80 game. I actually bought... Um, Carnegie, I don't know if you can see it here, I bought it at the same time, and this game is $60, and it weighs like five pounds, and this one weighs like like two pounds. It has recycled, it has recycled art from other games. It has minimal art. Um, doesn't have miniatures, which, I mean, again, I don't care about miniatures, but for the $80 price tag, you'd expect it to have miniatures. So overall, I'm not too impressed with what is actually in here um, it's not bad by any means i'm glad i have it but for that price tag i was expecting a little bit more and also from fantasy flight i wanted really cool art i wanted um, better uh, i just wanted more components for that price tag now if because i feel like an expansion is going to come out and i'm going to get the same amount of stuff minus the board um, and so if i'm going to have to spend 90 bucks for that too just for five new characters and some new cards because that, I mean, that's all this really is. So very interesting. I mean, I know you're paying a little bit for the IP, but I don't know. That's a significant increase. All right. Well, sorry to end on a sour note there, guys, but hey, that was a uh, Marvel dagger. I'm looking forward to playing it despite my maybe small disappointment in the price to, to component uh, ratio, but Still, it's Marvel. I love it. I'm excited about it. I normally am not a big fan of cooperative games, but if it's done right or if it's Marvel themed, it usually wins me over. So looking forward to this one. Well, that'll be it for today, guys. So until next time, I'll see you around the board.